He's got one of the best pun code names in the whole G.I. Joe line. It's our favorite number crunching rock climber, Albert Pine. Code name, you guessed it, Alpine. Let's talk about him. But before we do, let me say thank you for watching JLS Comics, whether you've been with me for a while or it's your first time here. If you do enjoy the video, don't forget to subscribe and share it so you and your friends don't miss the content I upload just like this every few days. Let's jump into the story here. Al was born and raised in Minidoka, Idaho, which sits in the low, dusty Snake River Plain, a geological bowl carved out by centuries of Snake River water flow and volcanic activity. It's a small town that was home to a Japanese internment camp during World War II. What the location's geography means is that from town, no matter what direction Al looked in, the horizon was lined with mountains, and as his V1 file card says, it was a barrier between him and the world he wanted. To overcome this, Al took up mountain climbing. After graduating college with an accounting degree and working for a large CPA firm, Al continued with his passion of rock climbing. And from there, he decided to take it one step further and enlisted in the Army where he trained at Mountain Warfare School, Camp Ethan Allen, eventually graduating from Ranger School as well at Fort Benning where he learned combat operations on high-angle terrain, even night repels with night vision goggles as his only way to see. He learned how to scale cliffs under fire and laden with ammo, combo gear, LTDs, heavy equipment, and under a variety of weather and day-night conditions. Realizing his skill not only as a vertical assault or mountaineer, but with numbers as well, and with the recruiting effort becoming increasingly hyper-specialized, Alpine was recruited to the G.I. Joe team in 1985. The debut, though, was his V1 action figure. Alpine wouldn't show up in Larry Hama's A Real American Hero comic book series until the spring of 1986 with issue 45. And in that issue, we first meet Alpine in the PX Canteen at Fort Wadsworth on Staten Island as Flint introduced him and Quick Kick to Snake Eyes and Spirit. The five of them were immediately given an op board and restricted to post. Hawk knew that Ripcord, who was doing a flyover of Cobra Island in the Sky Striker with Ace, would punch out because he was looking for his girlfriend, Candy. So he had a team on standby, this team, to form a quote-unquote rescue mission, which was really a cover for them to do an illegal recon mission. They dumped a raft out of the back of a transport plane for their night insertion onto Cobra Island. And after burying the raft above the tide line, and inhibited by a torrential rainstorm in the night sky, Alpine set about climbing the cliffside of the volcano on Cobra Island, and from the summit, the team was able to recon the Cobra facilities down below. Alpine was spotted while Quick Kick used a telephoto lens to snap photographs of Night Raven and these new terror drones. When they spotted who they thought was Ripcord, because Ripcord was actually Zartan, Alpine rappelled down the volcano to set up a diversion so the rest of the team could snag him. Alpine fired on the Cobra elements, sneaking up on fake Ripcord, and as Flint watched all this unfold, Ripcord disappeared. Because, of course, Ripcord is Zartan, but they didn't know yet. They got this fake Ripcord off the Cobra Island. And later, Xandar and Zarana rescued Zartan from the pit, where they escaped into the swamps in a thunder machine, and so the Joes gave chase. Out in the swamps, Alpine shot a swamp fire with a grappling hook while Shipwreck tied off the other end to an MBT mauler as an anchor, and the swamp fire crashed, spilling Xandar and Zarana out into the wet marshlands. And from there, Alpine wasn't used a whole lot on some of the bigger missions which took place in the desert, in Scotland, in the water. He wasn't even in Cobra Civil War, which they may have needed him because, you know, that volcano was still there. But he did make a few appearances in the Special Missions spin-off series. For example, issue 2, Alpine was part of the team that went into Greenland to look for a World War II era Nazi warplane on a glacier, because yes, he can ice climb, It supposedly had nerve gas in its hull. Alpine isn't actually in Special Missions 15, but the team had to ascend a cliff face to get to a monastery in Hidden Valley, and everyone's like, why isn't Alpine doing this? This is like, this is perfect for him. And in Special Mission 25, Alpine was with a Jinx and Lightfoot, undercover, backing up Tiger Force, a team his action figure counterpart joined in 2004. Alpine finally showed up again in the main series with issue 193 as the team rallied for the Sierra Gordo Robert Graves rescue op. He remained on base and was assigned to the relief team as Alpha and Bravo teams flew into Sierra Gordo. Relief team went in as well with a mean dog to assist both Alpha and Bravo teams. And they managed to rescue the hostages and get back to the pit. By the time they got back, they found out that the Cobra used that time of them being absent to take over the base. Alpine got a pretty prominent spot atop the Rolling Thunder on the cover of issue 201, which was an homage to Herb Trimpey's iconic issue 1 cover art. In that issue, he was with Muskrat and Long Range in San Francisco at Storm Shadow's old dojo. After the pit was overrun, the Joes decided, well, I think we need to spread ourselves out. We'll have three bases now. So they had the pit in Utah, Fort Wadsworth on Staten Island, and this, their Bay Area base. Upon first inspection, they found it was already being maintained by Budo. 
Off panel, Alpine Torpedo, Muskrat, and Long Range were sent on a hostage snatch and run rescue mission to Northern Alistan, based off of intel from the relief mission. There was a hostage being held there. For this team, Torpedo had Alpine as egress leader, meaning he'd lead them back out of the village. Alpine set up with Long Range from his Overwatch position while the rest of the team advanced through the village looking for the hostage, who turned out to be none other than Dr. Adele Burkhart. Back at the pit, Scarlet told Stalker that they only had one drone in that AO, and Tomahawk's extraction team was still two hours out. So Stalker replied that Alpine and Muskrat are the two best operators to get Burkhart up the cliff and overland to the LZ. And indeed he was, as we next see Alpine hammer anchors into the cliff face for their ascent. So Torpedo and Alpine were able to help Burkhart up the cliff, while the others held off Ibrahim and his insurgency forces that had chased them out of the village, and they had some aid from a couple cluster bombs. Just as Burkhart got to the top, she was hit in the leg with a bullet, and so Alpine was forced to carry her since they still had five clicks to go up to the LZ. It's the famous Alpine taxi I'll mention again in a minute. As Burkhart worried that she got the villagers killed, Alpine told her, If everyone didn't do anything because they feared the consequences, we'd still be digging grubs with pointed sticks and cowering in the back of caves. We remember Spartacus because he did get all his pals killed. And then it got real heavy as Alpine had to put down the wounded Burkhart for a minute to engage Ibrahim's forces, and he handed her a gun and said, It's not to shoot these people, it's so that you can shoot yourself and avoid being captured. They took most of the forces out with ruthless efficiency, leaving only a couple of kids who Alpine told to skedaddle. But there were more on another ridge, including Ibrahim with a massive Dragonoff sniper rifle. They finally made it to the LZ where Scarlet ordered the drone to dive bomb the remaining insurgents, which only left Ibrahim alive. Alpine took off his coat to wave off Wild Bill's tomahawk because it was susceptible to fire from the Dragonoff. Only when he did this, he presented himself as a perfect target for the sniper who actually aimed right at him center mass. Ibrahim sent the bullet downrange and Burkhart jumped right in front of him, saving Alpine, but she died. And as she lay there dying, she told Alpine that he's one of the rough men who George Orwell wrote about, who stand ready in the night to do violence on our name. Muskrat told him to leave her body since the LZ was so hot, but Alpine said, no, we don't leave our own behind. So he took the body with him to the tomahawk, and as he got to it, Ibrahim shot again, but he hit her body, and posthumously she saved Alpine a second time. And that shot was all long range needed to take Ibrahim out finally, and they were off. In the helo, Alpine held Burkhart's body close. You're not putting her in a zip bag in the corner like lost luggage, he said. She saved my life twice, and I'm lo letting her go home alone, as a tear rolled down his cheek. So they RTB'd, debriefed, and went back to their post in San Francisco. Alpine's next mission found him on the rudatistan Alistan border with Torpedo and Tunnel Rat in an awe striker in pursuit of Bomb Strike. That's when they spotted Black Major in his Hiss 4 ring neck and a Hiss 1 with Bomb Strike strapped to the nose, much like the Baroness was strapped to the nose of a tank in Cobra Civil War. With no time to spare, it was an awe striker in three Joes versus three tanks. But Alpine was driving and he knows how to whip that thing around, so they also had speed and maneuverability advantages over the tanks. Extraction? Successful. Alpine was then sent on a mission in G.I. Joe A Real American Hero Silent Option, where he and Torpedo were on the cover with a bunch of new Joes like Bomb Strike, Helix, Don Moreno, Throwdown. Bomb Strike sent Alpine and Don to Trucial Abysme to track down this new lady, a deadly weapon named Helix, that she hunted human traffickers. Alpine called one of the traffickers Dog Bar before he took him out with his PDW. They then tracked Helix to an offshore oil rig where Alpine got to use his vertical assault skills again by climbing up a pylon from the rib. Alpine had to scrape white phosphorus off the face of a kid that was working with the Red Ninjas. It was pretty intense. Back to the main series, Alpine was just returning back to the dojo in San Francisco where he met up with Long Range, Budo, and Milo. We see him next on the bus to Springfield with a surprising mix of G.I. Joes, and this is the Snake Hunt event, and up to issue 271 and 272, where we are now as of the publishing of this video. And so that's how we leave Albert Pine in the summer of 2020, still active duty, and still very much an important part of the team and their ongoing operations against Cobra and the forces of evil. Alpine was an action force as well, stationed in Geneva, Switzerland. Issue 6, which was reprinted in the USA, is European Missions Issue 13. He has to quickly defuse a grenade that a CG threw with him. And in Action Force 23, he teamed up with Flint, Heavy Metal, and Quick Kick to prevent a rogue Cobra trooper from releasing a canister of nerve gas at the Ministry of Defense. As an aside, Action Force Alpine was born in Grenoble, France to Algerian parents. The terrain of the hometown is similar to that of his U.S. counterpart, which led to his graduation from Special Forces School in Toulouse in southern France. 
for Devils do. Alpine temporarily went back to accounting, but joined up again when the team was reinstated. He helped them fight Serpentor and even went up into the high mountains of Tibet to fight Red Ninjas and find Storm Shadow and Cobra Commander. During the World War III event, Alpine was in Georgia, a former Soviet bloc nation. And now on to animation. Voiced by Lee Weaver, Alpine was in the Sunbow series quite a bit, really one of the stars of the first season. He's one of the characters who benefited from the timing of his action figure release and the start of the first season of the cartoon. He was in season two a lot, but he'd only say one or two things or really nothing at all. Same with the G.I. Joe the movie, he was in that. In fact, he was one of the Joes guarding Serpentor's cell, but he really only just had a, a handful of lines. His real standout parts were in season one, becoming a snarky, funny character, different from Larry Hama's portrayal. And he would heavily play off of his friend, Bazooka. They were a great team. He first appeared in part one of Pyramid of Darkness in the first few minutes, in fact, where, where he and Bazooka and a few other Joes flew right out of the space shuttle with jump jetpacks on to meet Zaymont and Tomax, who were in their trouble bubbles. He was later in part three in the Arctic trying to take out Major Blood in that third cube. This is where he does his famous Alpine yodel. Later he was stuck in the snow and he said he knows how a frozen pizza feels. Bazooka had to jump on his back because his leg was injured. And this, again, was the Alpine taxi service. Storm Shadow chased them and this is the episode where they met up with Quick Kick, of course, whom he'd debut with in the comic books. In the fun house, Cobra wanted $60 billion, so Alpine said, here, just, you know, put it on my credit card. Then he was on the assault team who attacked the Cobra base, which turned out to be a fun house, hence the name of the episode. In an episode called 20 Questions, Shipwreck says he thinks he earned an Oscar, and Alpine goes, yeah, my uncle Oscar, the moocher. <laughs> the greenhouse effect episode found Alpine fighting a vegetable at a country fair because some guy had a canister in his greenhouse. In Viper is Coming, Alpine was climbing the outside of an extensive Enterprises building, and, and then in the episode called where reptiles roam, Alpine was dressed up as Big Bog Austin as he went undercover at a dude ranch. Alpine actually died in the gods below, but was revived. Oh, and Alpine also got his own PSA telling kids what to do when you're lost. Now it's time for the action figures. Alpine's V1 action figure hit toy shelves in 1985 with these iconic green and black gear and over-the-shoulder ropes. This Alpine was also featured in the Battle Stations commercial that year. There were three figures released in 2004. For the Valor vs. Venom line, he came packaged with Swamp Rat, two-pack. Another in 2004 gave him a green shirt, and he was by himself. And the third figure in 2004 was for Tiger Force, and he came with crosshair. 2008 Alpine was part of a DVD Battles pack, which was later released in 2015 as part of the 50th anniversary line. That figure came along with a Cobra Shock Trooper and a Rock Viper. Also in 2015, there was a figure released at that year's G.I. Joe convention, and this version of Alpine came with Frostbite and Sky Striker, the figure, not the jet, and together they formed the Tiger Force Helicopter Crew. And so there you have it, the story of G.I. Joe's Alpine. For now, that's a wrap on this one, my friends. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you can be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this each and every week. I'm Jesse, this is J.L.S. Comics, and I'll see you soon.